It's that time of the week again. The title of today's episode is Rooted in TK8. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Well, it is TK Friday again, and I'm glad you're all aboard with me again today. Today, we're working on this image. I'm calling it Rooted, Rooted in TK8. I'll be doing a full edit on this image with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, and you can also download the PSD file of this image and follow along with me. It's a great way to learn. I want to try something a little different today. I made some detailed notes, fairly detailed, of the edit that we'll be doing today. Now, I made this prior to the making of the video because these are the notes that I go by when I'm making the video because obviously I do the video, I do the editing in advance and then I copy down the notes that I've done for all the steps. And I'm going to provide these today for you in a PDF file that you can download. Now, if you think this is a good idea and you would like me to do this going forward, please let me know in the description below. Leave a comment and say, yeah, Dave, I like this idea of notes. And if I get enough of you wanting them, I'll go ahead and you know, start providing them in the future uh, if, it, if you feel it's going to be helpful to you. So let me know. But please leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know if you would like me to continue to do this. Now, just look in the description below the video and you'll find notes, PDF, It'll give you a download link to my Dropbox. And also, don't forget, download the PSD file of the image that we're going to work on today because the notes go right along with it. And just before we start, if you don't yet have the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, I encourage you to get it. It's really inexpensive. Just click on my affiliate link in the description below this video. It'll take you to Tony Kuiper's web store where you could purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And you can use my promo code DK15 and save 15% off your entire purchase. If you're new to TK8, I recommend the TK8 combo where you get the TK8 plugin plus the video guide. This is a really good resource, especially if you're just starting out. Okay, then let's jump into this. Okay, I started out in Lightroom and I have this already done for you in the PSD. I basically ran a linear profile on the image. It's my Canon 5D Mark II. I hit auto and pretty much took the settings the way they were. I just touched up the whites and the black point like I always do. And I explain this in all my videos. I added no presence, clarity, or dehazing. Uh, I don't think I touched the vibrance or saturation, but I did. And I always do this is go to my tone curve and made some tone curve adjustments. I basically want the image as flat as I can possibly get it without too much extra contrast in it because I'm going to do that with the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. Okay, and I always, under detail, use the default setting of 40 and no noise reduction because I've noise reduced the image already for you and that's already done. And also you see this little knot on the wood right here. I cloned that out as well because I didn't think it was that attractive. So I've already taken care of that for you. Um, I just use the uh, clone stamp tool to do that in Photoshop and... Other than that, lens corrections, I always do remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. Then I just right click on the image, edit in in Photoshop. But you know what? I'm already there. And this is how you'll start out. You're going to just have the background layer. It's already been denoised. And I use the clone stamp tool to repair the root. And now we're ready to get started. I had a really hard time naming this tutorial. I finally ended up with Rooted in TK8. I was going to call it Zen Tree, but, you know, I thought, nah, Rooted in TK8 actually sounds better. And it makes sense because we're all rooted here in TK8. And I'm so glad you're here with me today. And also, please continue to leave those comments and questions and subscribe if you're not yet subscribed. It really helps my channel to grow, and I appreciate it. And I love to hear from you. And we can all share with each other, and it's really cool. Now, for me, this is always my starting point to come up and click on this luminosity mask icon and click on Midtones 3, which is right here. Click that on and click on the color grading tool icon. What that does is gives me a color grading tool with a mid three mask on it, and that mid three mask is only there to protect me from clipping my shadows and highlights if I get too aggressive with either shadows or highlights. It really protects you from doing that, and that's why it's there. 
Now, the first thing I want to do is, now you could use any one of these blocks, shadows, midtones, or highlight highlights. It's totally up to you. But the beautiful thing about the color grading tool is not only can you adjust shadows, midtones, and highlights, you can add color tones to each one of those areas, which is really fun. And I love that about this color grading tool. I'm going to start off with shadow. So I'm going to click on this black block and I'm going to take this slider and start to drag it to the left. And I'm looking at my notes. So I came over right to right around here. I don't want to go too dark and block up my shadows. So that's important. So be careful there. And then I'm going to go to midtones and I want to open up the midtones a little bit. So I'm going to start to drag this to the right. Now you'll notice when I'm dragging, you don't see anything happening until you actually release the left click of your mouse. And now you can see I've lightened up my image. Okay. And I might just lighten it up just a little bit more, maybe right there. And now we're going to work with the highlights. I'm not going to do too much here. You might not even see much of a change. I'm just going to drag this to the right, just a little wee bit. But let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. And already it's really helping it out. I have more contrast, not too much, but I really like it. And I've kind of balanced out the image a little bit better. And to me, it's a good starting point. Now, I'm always looking for problems. That is the way I edit, okay? Now, the first problem I see with this image is right here on this rock right here. Now, it did rain here, and this is, this is a little bit light in here but I want to darken this up a bit. So let's tackle that next. I'm going to go ahead and next out of this color grading tool. The first thing I want to do is get a levels adjustment. And this is something that I do a lot. I take a levels adjustment and I change the blend mode from normal to multiply, which darkens everything up. And then I like to put a black mask on here and you can click right here on the CX or the combo panel. That puts a black hide all layer mask on there and it hides your adjustment. And now we're going to base our luminosity mask off the image just the way it is right now without that adjustment. But I could go ahead and close this properties panel because I'm not going to use the actual curve. I'm just using it to get a blend mode of multiply. So being a little tricky there. Whenever I need to do a general darkening of the image, I use multiply. And when I want to lighten an image, I'll use the screen blend mode. Now we have to make a mask for this layer. I originally tried a zone mask and tried to target some of the gray on the rock here. That didn't work out so well. So I said, mm, let me try something else. So I went to luminosity masks and I thought, well, let me try a, there's a lot of midtones there, I thought. So let me try mids one. And I thought, you know what? That looks good. Now, I didn't even refine this at all. All I did was clicked on this icon, which outputs it to a black mask, painting with a selection with a white brush. Now, you get this warning message here. Warning, no pixels are more than 50% selected. Don't worry about that. Just click OK. You're good to go. And now we can paint. And now get yourself a, you know, a decent sized brush size with a nice soft edge on it. And I'm using 100% opacity, flow 100%. And I'm just going to paint in these areas. Now I can lift my brush and paint again. Every time I lift my brush, I'll add more of that darkening. Okay, so like I'm lifting and painting, lifting and painting, lifting and painting here, down in here. And that mask is protecting me. So I can just darken this up. Lift, paint, lift, paint, 100%. And remember that. That selection wasn't like pure white, so it's not giving me, uh, it's not putting tons of paint down with each stroke. And I'm just going to find all the areas that I just feel like I need to darken. So every time you see me lifting and painting, okay, lifting and painting. Just so I feel I get it right, I think I need to lift and paint a few times down in here. And just like that, you know, we become artists. We're painting with our brush. I highly recommend a Wacom tablet and pen or some kind of a pen because it really helps you, okay? Here's the before and here's the after. But isn't that nice? And look how simple that was. And you know what else? I think I want to make my brush a little smaller. And I'm just going to paint across here a couple times. Lift and paint, lift and paint, lift and paint. And that is it. Again, before and after. Now, what is next? But I do want to say painting through a selection is a great way of really getting really precise and accurate adjustments that you, the editor, want. You're the one that is influencing everything that you're doing, which is really great. And that's what I love about the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. We're the ones crafting our images, and I think that's awesome. Now, right now, you'll notice we have a selection. And always look for selection indicators, because if you do, sometimes they can mess up 
the next thing you're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here on the TK8 CX or combo panel and get rid of my selection because the next thing I want to do is click on the TK actions and grab an action. Now the action I went for, and I kind of went earlier in the image edit this time, and that was a soft pop. I used it last week in that flower image and I really liked it. And I thought, what's it going to look like on this image? So let's try it and find out. I'm going to click on soft pop. And it goes through and runs its action. And I thought, wow, man, that looks really cool. It brought a lot of detail out. Let me show you. Here's the before and here is the after. But look at that detail it brought out. And it also made that color really pop. I felt it was a little bit too strong. So I took the opacity and brought it back to like 82%. Now you can also work with the fill. But I find the opacity gives you a lot more fine tuning, I should say, because with the fill, we're at 15%. And if I just drag this a couple, like 14, 13, a big amount of change will take place. But with the opacity, I can drag it slower paced and get it honed in just the way I like it. So that's why I use the opacity versus the fill, but you can use either one. I should also point out if you feel like you need more of the effects or your opacity would be at 100, obviously you can't make that any more, but you could take the fill and start to bump it to the right. Now I find you don't want to go too much over like 25, but 15 is generally a pretty good starting point. Let's take a look at the before and after so far. I'm going to use my before and after action that I made. Here's the before. And here is after. So I like the direction we're going. Now, what is next? I love the color back on these rocks back in here. And I think I want to bring some of the lighter areas up. I'm going to do some dodging and burning. So some of the light areas back in here, like in here, I'm going to bring those up a little bit in lightness. But I'm going to use color to dodge them. I'm going to start out by making a mask. And I'm going to pick this area right here to base my mask off of. So what I'm going to do is I could try a color mask, but... I tried a zone mask and it worked nicely. So I'm going to find some of this light area right here and click and click OK. And that picks that area. Now I need to refine that mask a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten the selection by taking this slider and dragging it to the left. And I'm trying to isolate like these light areas. OK, so right around there. Now I want to lighten that selection up by dragging this brightness slider to the right. And I think that does a pretty good job right there. And now I need to output it. So I'm going to output it to a dodge tool. And if you click on the left side of this dodge tool, you're going to get a 50% gray layer. You're going to be painting through a selection. Okay. So I'm going to click right here and you'll notice I have a dodge layer and it says white paint, but I'm going to change that to color paint. So I'm going to click on this color brush right here, this green brush, which opens up a color picker. And I'm going to sample this color right here. And then I'm going to drag it straight up. And the reason I'm doing that, I'm dragging it straight up is because see this point right here. And I show this line in my notes. This is 50% here. The color sits right around in here, but I have to be above 50% for it to make any effect because I'm painting with an overlay blend mode. We're just going to click OK. I'm using a small soft edge brush, opacity of 20%. And I'm just going to paint down here once, lift. Paint again, these areas a couple times. Every time you see me stroke, I'm lifting. Okay, so paint, lift, paint on these areas. It's just the areas I want to lighten up. Now, you're the artist here, and you could do with it whatever you want. Whatever areas you want to lighten, that's totally up to you. You don't have to lighten the areas that I'm lighting. This is what I want to lighten, but you might want to lighten something else, and that is totally up to you. But remember, you want to find some tones that kind of match the color that you want. Okay, so I'm going to get up in here a little bit and up in here. I think that's pretty good. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before and here is the after. Again, the before and the after. Let me zoom in a little bit in case you can't see that real well. So let's take a look. Here is the before. And here's after, but you see that nice little extra color on there, which is really nice. Next, I want to dodge some of these little green areas of moss. Let me zoom in again here so you can really see what the heck I am doing here. This time I'm going to do a freehand dodge. On the CX panel, click on the green brush that opens up your color picker. And I'm going to sample this color right here, this light green color. 
And I'm just going to come straight up from it and maybe move it to the right a little bit and add a little bit more color. This is going to be a freehand dodge. So there's that color. But what I want to do is get a dodge tool. And we can get it right here for freehand on the CX or combo panel, the left side of the dodge tool right here. Click that. And now I'm going to make my brush smaller. I still have that 20% opacity on there. And I'm just going to like paint across here once, twice, and some of these little areas. See, it's just going to make, make them a little bit more vibrant. I'm lifting. I might go up to like 40%. I'm going to take that to 40. Yeah, that's quicker. I can get that on there quicker. But I'm just going to paint over a few of these little mossy areas. Uh, maybe down in here a little bit, over in here. Even areas that are dark, I'm going to hit those a couple times. And see if I can lighten them up. And is there anything else maybe up in here? You can leave this step out if you want to, but I kind of like it. But this is freehand. And again, this is where you become the artist and, you know, you can just do this. And I think that's good. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. But you can leave that step out. But, you know, pay attention to details because all these little extra details you do will really add up. Let's take a look at it at a distance. Here's the before. And here's the after. And yeah, I can see it. And I may want to get this up in here now. And here a couple times. Get that maybe across here. These guys up in here. And I think that's it. Now, what are we going to do next? The next problem I see is these leaves down here, these fallen dead leaves. I'd like to darken them up and turn them a little bit warmer, a little bit more to reddish warm tones. But right now I have a selection. So let's go ahead and delete that selection by clicking on this icon in the CX or combo panel. Let's get a color grading tool. Now you must click the plus to activate it. And we're gonna work with uh, shadows and midtones. So I'm gonna click shadows first. And basically what I wanna do is just darken up the shadows a bit, somewhere right around there. And it's only working on these darker tones in here that I'm looking at. And then I'm gonna get mid, well then I'm gonna warm those up a little bit. I'm gonna move this up to the right here a little bit. See how they get a little warmer. Just look in the shadow areas there right about there, and then I'm gonna go with mid-tones, and let's darken up the mid-tones to somewhere right, I don't know, right around there. And then I wanna kind of take this color grading tool and warm up those. Yeah, see they look more like brown leaves there. I think that's pretty good. We can always go back there later and readjust. Put a black mask on there to hide it, and now we have to create a mask. So let's X out of the color grading tool. I think a color mask will work great to sample these tones in here. So let's grab a color mask tool and select some of these warm tones in here. Click OK. And now let's refine that mask. Let's go ahead and lighten it up. Let's take it up probably the whole way up like that. And then let's work with these sliders right here. Let me see if I can narrow this in. I'm going to take this bottom circle and drag it to the left a little bit just to tighten up that selection right around there and we can try the top one move it in yeah that tightens it up a little more i think right around there works pretty well i think we're light enough make sure i got that as light as i can and let's i'll put that to a black mask painting through a selection with a white brush and now i want to make sure my opacity is at 100 percent. i'm typing my zero key it's a shortcut I'm going to get a nice soft edge, large brush, and start to paint in my adjustment. Every time I lift, remember, I'll be adding another, and I'm lifting several times through here. I'll get under here, get these guys down in here, down in here. Lift, paint, lift, paint, darkening these leaves up a bit. Even up through here, I think will be good. I can get in between there, right in there, and these leaves here. Lift, paint, lift, paint, lift, paint. Oh, I can make a song, lift, paint, lift, paint. <laughs> Gotta have fun. It is the joy of editing. I really enjoy this. I, I kid you not, I love to edit. And I hope you do too. Hey, let me know in the comments section below if you love to edit your images as much as I do. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller and get along these little shadow areas a little bit more. Like in here, here, down here. And I think that's good. Let's take a look. Here is the before. And here's after, but I think that really helps. The next thing I want to do is work on this moss. I don't like the color of it. I want to darken it up a little bit and make it so it's not so vibrant green. 
Now to do that, I'm gonna use a color grading tool, but right now I have a selection. This is important. We don't want a selection, so we gotta remove the selection. So you can click right here on the CX or combo panel and delete that selection. And now let's get a color grading tool. So click on the color grading tool icon. And remember, you gotta click the plus. If I would have left that selection, it would have put that selection in there and we didn't want that, okay? So now we have to adjust the moss color the way we want it. Forget about the rest of the image. So what I'm gonna do is darken up the midtone. So click on the midtone block and let's really darken up those midtones. We'll be painting this through a selection. Now, it's too vibrant green, so I'm gonna take this See green, the opposite of green is magenta. So drag this block into magenta and see how that takes some of that green edge off of there. So we can go the opposite way of green and pull some of that vibrancy off. And that looks really nice. Now I'm gonna go to my shadows and take my shadows and drag those a good bit to the left. And it'll just darken up those shadow areas in there. X out of the color grading tool. Now we have to build a mask. So let's put a black hide all layer mask on there by clicking on the CX or combo panel right here. And that hides it. And now let's click on the color mask icon and find a color that we want that represents the moss. And I think right here and click OK. And now we have to refine that. I'll start by taking the brightness slider and dragging it the whole way over to the right to really lighten up that mossy area. Now I wanna tighten up the selection. So I'm gonna see if I take this bottom slider and drag it to the left. Yeah, see I can tighten that up a good bit like that and take the top slider and drag it to the right. And I think right there and make sure that's the whole way to the right, which it is, and output that to a black mask painting through a selection with a white brush. And now with that white brush at 100% opacity, let's just go ahead and paint on our adjustment. Just like that. And over in this area too, I think I'll get and make my brush a little smaller and paint on this moss right in here. And maybe right here too. And I like how that darkens that up a little bit. There's a little bit of moss here as well. A little bit right in there, and I think that's good. Now remember, you can go over it again a couple times if you want to darken some other areas off. Oh, I missed this little bit right here. But I think that looks pretty good. Let's take a look. Here's the before, and here's the after. But take your time and get it right. There's a little bit on the edge here. Make my brush a little smaller and paint that a couple times, and I think I'm good to go. I'm liking it so far, but I think I want to tone down these roots here. I think they're a little bit too light drawing my eye too much. I want to darken them off a little bit. To do that, I think I'll use a color grading tool. Now remember, I have a selection. I have to remove the selection. Click right here in the CX or combo panel. And then let's grab a color grading tool. Click the plus to make it active. I'm just going to work with mid-tones. Now I'm just looking at the roots. I'm going to drag this to the left to darken up those roots to maybe right about there. And I want to warm them up a little bit. They're a little green. So I'm gonna take this and drag it over this way a little bit, maybe maybe right there. Now let's hide that adjustment by clicking on this black mask icon and that hides it. Now it's time to create a mask. Let's X out of the color grading tool and I think a color mask will work. So let's click on the color mask icon and let's find a tone, maybe right here and click okay. And yeah, that's pretty good. Let's lighten it up by sliding this brightness slider the whole way up to the right. And now let's tighten up the selection. Let's see if we can pull this slider into the left. Yeah, that tightens it up a good bit. Let's drag this one into the right. Let's output that to a black mask, painting through a selection with a white brush. And now at 100% opacity, we can go ahead and adjust our brush size here. And let's just paint on our selection. Vary in the brush as you need to. And we'll just tone it down. Now I'm not lifting, I'm just painting, making sure I cover the entire root. I don't think I got this yet. Paint down through here, going across there. Now I'm lifting my brush. Any areas that I want to darken more, I can do another coat over them. Jeez, I feel like I'm painting a house. I'm adding another coat of paint here to any area that I think needs to be darkened some more. Maybe in here and here and here. Maybe up here a couple times. Maybe down here. Now I am lifting here and painting. 
lift and paint, lift and paint. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to get over here one time, lift, I paint again, lift, paint again. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. So the before and after. And I think that looks pretty good. And if you felt you wanted to darken it up some more, you could click on this icon and make sure you have the color grading tool up. Click on the mid-tone block and let's just darken it up a little bit and maybe right there so here's the before and here's the after it's all non-destructive editing which is really nice now i feel it's a little oversaturated so here's what i'm going to do let's get rid of our selection very important so click the plus minus on the cx or combo panel let's x out of the color grading tool let's grab a hue saturation adjustment layer so click right here. Next, click on this paper clip icon. That clips this layer to the layer below, and it's only going to affect the roots. Isn't that cool? So let's take this saturation, and let's start to take some of that off to right around there, like a minus 21. And then we can also work with the lightness. We can take this lightness slider, and let's drag it to the left. And see how we can darken that root a little bit more, and right around 25 26 minus 25 26 check it out here's the before and here's the after and that is perfect believe it or not we're almost done let me close this property panel i want to do a little bit of freehand dodging and burning now i love doing this and what we're going to do is click on this icon right here the left side of this burn icon gives you a 50 percent gray layer and a soft light blend mode i'm going to change my opacity to 20 percent i'm typing the two on my keyboard and what i'll do is just start to burn some of these areas okay and remember every time i lift my brush and paint again i'm adding more paint so i'm just looking for shadow areas i'm going to go ahead and paint this in you see what i'm doing right now i'm just looking for shadows like right along here along here i'm going to finish this off and then i'll get back to you but you see exactly what i am doing i'm going to darken this whole area down a little bit under this tree right here, the shadow area here, some of these shadows in here. I'm gonna go ahead and pause and finish it up and I'll get right back to you. And I am back. Now I finished it up, here is the before and here is the after. Now if it's too strong, you can take this opacity slider and start to drag it off. Let's take it the whole way off and just build it up slowly and stop where we like it. And actually I think I like it around 90%. Here's the before and here is the after, but that's burning. And now we'll do some dodging. So to get the dodging tool on the CX or combo panel, click on the left side of the dodge tool. That gives you a 50% gray layer in the overlay blend mode. For my dodging, I want my brush opacity to be on 10. I'm gonna type the one key that changes it to a, a 10%. I'm gonna make my brush a little smaller. I'm gonna lighten up this side of the tree here by going up it. Now I also burned on these trees as well. But I'm going to start with these trees and just lighten up some of these areas. It kind of has some contour. So look for light areas. Now, you don't have to paint every light area. I'll just start this and show you. I'm going to paint on some of these mossy areas on the rock here. I'll pause now and finish this off because I don't want this tutorial getting too long. It's already long right now, so I'll be right back. And I am back. Now, here it is after the dodging. Let me show you before. Here's before. And here is after but I like that. And I usually like to put these two in a group. So if you hold uh, your shift key down and click on the burn layer and click on the right side of this group icon, you'll put those in a group with a white mask. And then I just type dodge and burn. Then you can shut off this group. There's before dodging and burning and here is after. And then you can pull the opacity back if it's too strong. So that's nice. If you stayed with me this long, congratulations. Two more short steps. We need to put a vignette around this, so let's click on our TK action icon. Let's click on a regular old vignette, uh, Gaussian blur. We're gonna accept it just the way it is, click OK. I'm gonna double click to the right of this layer, and we're gonna use blend diff underlying layer. I'm gonna hold my option or alt key down and split this to protect it. I'm gonna move it right to about here and click OK. That just protects the shadow areas. Here's the before, here's the after. It's a little strong. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit, right back to like 40% before and after. The last thing I wanna do is add a little bit of extra clarity just to the tree and some of the rocks up here. So we're gonna go back to TK Actions, grab a clarity action, click right here. I'm gonna use a 20 pixel radius, so I'm just gonna drag this up right 
there. 20.4 is going to work. This is going to be freehand. I'm going to click OK. Now it's covering the entire image, so I don't want that. So what can we do to correct that? Well, if you're thinking black mask, yes, you're right. Click that. You find that you'll use this all the time. I love this icon. Thank you, Tony Kuiper, for making that. So there we go. It's hidden. So now we need to get a brush. I'm going to use 100% opacity. So right now my opacity is at 10. Type your zero key. That's the shortcut. I have a nice soft edge brush, and I'm just going to paint down at 100% over this tree, over the roots, make my brush a little smaller, paint over all these roots. I'm going to go kind of quick here. May not be perfect, but you get the idea. Right up through here, make sure I got all this in here. Okay, and then I'm going to paint on just these rocks back in here. Maybe this moss over here and this rock here. This area right in here and that moss. And maybe this rock up to here, over to here. And I think that is it. So here is the before and here is the after. And with that, we're complete. Now I'm going to type my F key. I'm going to type it once. Type it the second time, it goes to this full screen view. Now, if you want to get back to your normal screen view, type F again. So F once, twice, and now we can take a look at our image and see what we think. And I'm loving it. And now let's take a look at the overall before. Here's the before. What a difference, wouldn't you say? So that's the before. And now here is the after. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. That way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.